And in this video, I'm gonna share my history of riding the BMW GS motorcycle. In my over 20 years of riding adventure motorcycles, I've had three BMW GS motorcycles. Like a lot of you guys, I started out riding when I was a kid. I got my first motorcycle on my eighth birthday and it was a little Honda 50 and that's what started it all for me. I lived in rural West Michigan on a blueberry farm and I would take off on my little Honda 50 with a knapsack filled with food and I would go on an epic five or 10 mile adventure by myself in the woods and in the trails. It might not seem like a lot now, but as an eight year old, that was quite an epic adventure and that's what put the love into me for motorcycle adventure traveling. And I rode that bike for a few years until I was like maybe 12 years old and then I upgraded to a Yamaha 360 Enduro. Rode that bike for a couple more years until I was in my early teens and then I kind of got out of motorcycling. I got into video production and so motorcycling kind of took a, a backseat, disappeared from my life for a while. And it wasn't until I was in my early 20s and I was living in Seattle, Washington at the time and I was commuting to a job didn't have a car, I was riding the bus, and for whatever reason I decided that I wanted to get back into motorcycling. And so I looked in the, the newspaper and the classified ads at those times, and I found a used BMW R50 for sale. So this is a 1972 boxer engine style BMW motorcycle. I purchased that bike for $1,000, put a little extra money into restoring it, and that was the first motorcycle that I had as an adult. The cool thing is, is that I still have this motorcycle today. It's right here at my motel down here in Bisbee. It's fully restored and I ride it around the Southwest quite often. I love that old bike. It's got a lot of character and personality. And that was my first BMW and it's what got me back into motorcycling way back in my 20s. So I rode that bike around the Northwest for about four years and really found that I loved motorcycle touring. I loved going on long rides, I loved exploring new places, and that was a great street touring motorcycle for me at the time. After about four years of riding it, I was starting to get the itch to be able to travel on places where I couldn't go on that motorcycle. I really loved the backcountry, I was into backpacking and rock climbing, and I just started to think, wouldn't it be cool if I had a motorcycle that I could go into these places with as well? In 1998, three things happened that really sort of defined the rest of my life until this point in terms of motorcycling and riding the BMW GS. The first thing that happened was that I got laid off from my job. My contract ended. I was doing video production for a software company. And when my contract ended, rather than just jump back in and try to find another job doing video production, I, I sat down and I thought, what is it that I really want to be working on? You know, what kind of film and video projects do I envision or dream about doing? And the thing that came to my mind was that, why don't I do a film about motorcycling? You know, that was a new love that I had just found in my life. And so I decided that I would take some time off and I would try to make a, a documentary about motorcycling. The second thing that happened at that pivotal time in my life was that it was 1998 and that was the first year that BMW came out with a chain drive motorcycle. It was the F650 GS, it was also known as the Funduro. It was a GS motorcycle that a young guy like me could actually afford. And so when this new chain drive 650 motorcycle came out by BMW, I went out and purchased one. That was my first BMW GS motorcycle, I bought it new from the dealership and that was the beginning of this long journey that I've been on. So right away when I bought my 650, I found out that this was a perfect bike for me. It was the kind of bike that I could do, the kind of rides that I wanted to do in the backcountry, and that's exactly what I did. I started exploring the Northwest, camping off my motorcycle, getting off the beaten track, and it was a great start to my own adventure riding career. It's pretty wet out and I'm uh, heading up into the mountains away from the coast and I've noticed on the GPS that the elevation is obviously going up. The third critical thing that happened at that point in my life was that I went to a slideshow at the local BMW motorcycle dealership in Seattle and the name of the slideshow was 10 years on two wheels and it was by a gentleman named Helge Peterson who had just spent 
10 years traveling around the world on his BMW R80 GS. And he's a photographer and he documented his journey and made a beautiful coffee table book. And when I saw his slideshow about 10 years of global motorcycle travel, that was the hook that got set. And I realized that I really needed to get into this kind of riding where I could do something similar, where I could travel around the world or in the back country and go to these beautiful, amazing places on a motorcycle. Seeing that slideshow really set the hook in me. And I went up to this gentleman, Helge Peterson, after the show, introduced myself, told him my experience with film and video making and motorcycle riding and asked him if there was a way we could work on a project together. Unfortunately, he said yes. And a couple months later, we went out and filmed a short motorcycle documentary together. And that video, as old as it is, is even on this channel today. You can watch it. I'll post a link below. But that was kind of my first motorcycling film. And I was getting one step closer to doing the kind of motorcycle rides and film and video projects that I wanted to. One of the first rides that I took on my 650 GS was to Iceland. Helge invited me to travel to Iceland with another friend, riding around Iceland, documenting our journey, and I ended up producing a feature-length film about the Iceland expedition. That was a huge ride and a big project for me as a young filmmaker. Imagine, I'm barely 30 years old, and I'm on my GS motorcycle riding in a place like Iceland and filming it, you know, doing it for work. It was a passion project and it just told me that my dream was possible and that I could actually go out and have these kind of adventures and film them on motorcycles like I was doing in Iceland. So from about 2002 until 2010, I did five or six global world tours with Helge Peterson and Globe Riders. We rode across Africa, we rode across Asia, Europe, we did the Silk Road, we rode across Russia and China. All of these fantastic long distance rides with a lot of BMW GS motorcycles. They were commercial tours. There were like 10 to 15 riders on each ride. And again, most of those videos are on this channel. Whether you know that or not, you can dig down through my archives and you can see several feature length documentaries about riding adventure bikes in all these different places around the world. On most of those trips, I was traveling in a support vehicle or a chase vehicle. I didn't have my own motorcycle. I would ride in the van or the car. I would film the ride as best I could in those ways, but I wasn't on my own bike. Unless somebody was hurt or injured, um, that would be the only opportunity that I would get to ride someone else's bike. And that happened quite often. I remember in Russia, uh, one of our customers fell down and broke his ankle. And so I got to ride his BMW 1150 GS across Siberia for three weeks, and it was fantastic. So I rode my first BMW, the 650 GS, for over 10 years, had a lot of great rides, put about 50,000 miles on that motorcycle, and in 2009, I took off on my first big riding solo type of project down to Mexico. And I spent 50 days riding 2,500 or 3,000 miles on my 650 solo in Mexico. I'm equipped to be a self-sufficient solo video journalist, and I do it all on the road with equipment that I carry with me on the motorcycle. And I don't have any pre-arranged lodging or hotels or things like that, nor do I have a chase vehicle following me. So I'm gonna to be totally alone and responsible for everything that happens along the way. I documented that entire journey. That movie is the movie on this channel that has the most amount of views on it whatsoever. It's called Beyond the Border, Riding Solo in Mexico. And so if you like my new Riding Solo series, and you want to see where that kind of all began, maybe you should check out that movie Beyond the Border because to me that's kind of where my history and background of solo motorcycle adventure travel really began. And that was in 2009. It was kind of the last big ride that I took on the 650 GS. I got onto a road that was the worst I've seen yet on this trip the rocks, the sand, everything. And uh, I was afraid if it was gonna keep going like that, that I would never even make it out of there. I was doing about five miles an hour 
and it lasted for about two or three kilometers and then uh, then it connected with a different road and it got better so things were looking up in 2010 my 650 was getting a little worn out i'd just come home from mexico but fortunately my good friend Helge peterson once again he came to me with a project and he said bmw motorcycles wants to do something special this year it's the 30 year anniversary of the bmw gs the first one came out in 1980 and so in 2010 they wanted to to do something special to sort of celebrate the 30 year anniversary of the bmw gs and they asked helge if he would be willing to produce a documentary film about that subject and helge is a photographer he's not a, a filmmaker and so he graciously came to me and asked if I would be interested in taking on that project. And he said, look, there's a good chance you could get a new motorcycle out of this. And so we talked to BMW and we came up with a plan and they agreed to give me a new BMW F800 GS in return for producing a documentary about the 30 year history of BMW motorcycles. It was perfect timing for me. My old bike was just getting worn out and I now had an opportunity to get a new BMW GS, the 800, which was like the next level of their chain drive motorcycles after the 650. So I said yes. I spent many months researching the history of BMW motorcycles. I produced a film for BMW. That movie is also on this channel as well if you're interested in learning about the history of BMW GS. But long story short, I produced that film for them and I got a brand new BMW 800 GS. The first big ride I took with that BMW was my last Globe Riders project that I did in 2010, and it was the Globe Riders Africa adventure. We spent 37 days riding around Africa, and I filmed that whole expedition on my BMW 800 GS by myself, carrying all of my camera gear, riding with all of the other riders, and it was a great start for me on my new BMW 800 GS. 2010 was a big year because that was also the year that we started the backcountry discovery routes. I lived in Seattle, Washington at the time, and the first BDR route that we created was Washington State. We filmed that in the summer of 2010, and we produced a different BDR adventure in a different state every year since then. And so I rode that BMW 800 GS for the next seven years, filming all of the backcountry discovery route expeditions, I did other rides on it in the Northwest, on the Continental Divide, down to Mexico. I put a lot of miles on that bike. It served me very well. It allowed me to get out in the backcountry and do the kind of filming that I need to do. And it was just a great bike. In 2016, I was invited to film a project called Expedition 65. And this was a South America motorcycle adventure led by Jim Hyde from Rawhide Adventures in Southern California. And Jim invited me to tag along with a dozen other motorcyclists on a 65 day tour of South America. And so I shipped my 800 GS down to Cartagena and I filmed that ride from the 800 GS. Expedition 65 was the last big trip that I took on my 800 GS. And the reason for that is that once again, after about 60,000 miles of backcountry riding, that motorcycle was getting a little bit worn in and I was down in Peru when my clutch went out. We were at over 13,000 feet of elevation, way in the hell, out in the middle of nowhere. The weather was turning bad and my clutch goes out. You'll see it in the Expedition 65 movie. It was quite an adventure to extract my broken motorcycle from the mountains of Peru, get it down to Lima where I could get it repaired at the dealership and then continue on on that journey. But that trip, Expedition 65 in 2016 was the last trip I was able to do on my 800 GS. I can't help but think that this has got to be one of the most spectacular parts of the journey for me personally. The riding in the back of this truck like this, wow. This is the way to appreciate this scenery. This is absolutely memorable. I'll never forget this. Ah! Yeah! And now the challenge is gonna to be to see if I can pick up this mother in this wind, which I highly doubt I will be able to do that. So after I got back from South America with a slightly used, broken down, beaten up BMW 800 GS, I knew that this bike wasn't gonna serve me 
that much longer in my capacity as a filmmaker and doing the work that I was contracted, hired to do. And so I approached BMW and I said, look, you know who I am. You've seen the movies that I've been making for Globe Riders and for backcountry discovery routes. And I gave them a list of every project that I worked on for every year for the last seven years on that motorcycle that they gave me back in 2010. And I was honest. I said, I think your customers get a lot of value out of my movies. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have bought motorcycles because they've been inspired by these films. And if you want me to be able to continue what I'm doing, I need to be able to show up at work with a tool that gets the job done. I can't show up to film a motorcycle expedition on a bike that's beaten down and broken and isn't going to be reliable. I need to be a professional. I need to have a machine that works. And it's in your best interest that I show up on a good, new, modern BMW motorcycle to promote the brand and to do the kind of work that I'm doing. And I know that a company like BMW gets a lot of requests from people all the time with projects and ideas and they want to get sponsorship. And I was honest. I said, look, I know you get approached by people like me all the time wanting motorcycles, etc. But I'm not asking for anything for free. I would totally be willing to work on another project for you guys like I did with the last one in return for a new motorcycle. And they said, well, you know what? We've got this thing, it's called the BMW GS Trophy. It's a competition around BMW motorcycles. And we'd like it if you could film the qualifying events this year that are taking place around the USA. And so I went to those different qualifying events around the USA, produced a series of videos about the BMW GS Trophy in return for this bike. That was how I got this motorcycle. And just being completely honest and transparent here, I didn't go out and buy it, but it wasn't free either. I worked for it. I did a whole series of videos for BMW, and they gave me this 2017 BMW GS in return. BMW GS has been a great motorcycle for me. I've had three of them in 22 years, and I'll probably continue to ride them for a really long time. I need to be completely honest that I would really like to ride some other motorcycles as well. I think for me, the perfect solution would be to keep this motorcycle and then maybe augment it with more of a mid-sized adventure bike, something in the six to 700 cc range. When I first started riding BMW motorcycles, uh, the BMW GS was really one of the only choices in this kind of category of adventure motorcycles. We didn't have the amount of adventure motorcycles available to us 20 years ago that we have today. I mean, if you're looking to buy a new adventure motorcycle today, you have so many more choices and options than we did 20 years ago. And BMW's always been a leader in this category. They're still a leader. But now you have other KTMs and Hondas and Yamahas and so many other bikes out there to choose from. So whatever bike you ride, just get out there. Get out there and ride, explore find out what it can do. It can probably take you places that you've never imagined. The, the limitations are probably in your own riding skills and in your own mind more than the motorcycle itself. I'm gonna keep riding this motorcycle for a while. We've got lots of great adventures to come. I've also got my eye on some other bikes and hopefully sometime later this year, you're gonna see some different motorcycles on this channel. I've got some surprises in store and, and some really cool uh, new adventures planned. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've got something out of it and enjoyed learning a little bit about my history and my background as a motorcycle filmmaker and in particular why I've always ridden the BMW GS motorcycle. Thanks a lot for your support, you guys. It means the world to me. I love your comments in all the videos. I appreciate your support and uh, we'll see you coming up real soon, okay? Take care.